bomb that kills six people is terrible, but it's quick and it's simple. The bomb goes boom and six lives are lost. I am of course referencing the last episode of Ages of Murder I made, and I would like to put that event in contrast to the events that unfolded in Matamoros back in the late 80s. Because just like with terrorism, the brutality in Matamoros was a result of beliefs and ideologies corrupting the human mind to the point of murder. But while the bomb was sudden death, the Matamoros cult was anything but sudden in their killings. It all started with one man, Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo. He was born on November 1st in 1962. And maybe he was born to kill, after all the statistics show that most serial killers are born in November. He was born in Miami, Florida, the son of a teenage Cuban immigrant mother. His father was dead and his widowed mother Aurora Constanzo moved with him to Puerto Rico when he was still an infant. There Aurora would find herself a second husband and raise Adolfo as a Catholic Christian baptizing him and making him serve as an altar boy. When Adolfo was 10 years old, they moved back to Miami and when he was 11, his stepfather died, leaving Adolfo and his mother with some money. But the neighborhood had by this time grown weary of the Constanzos. They believed Aurora was a witch and anyone that had angered the woman would find headless goats and chickens on their doorsteps. Aurora was practicing rituals of Santeria, an old religion brought to Cuba by African slaves. But while Santeria in and of itself isn't really a malevolent religion, there is some off branches. Aurora would take Adolfo to Haiti to learn voodoo and in 1976 she would introduce him to the dangerous practitioner of Palo Mayombe, an off branch of Santeria of sorts. Palomayombe also originated in Africa. Palomayombe has been said to be the most dangerous practitioner in the world with powerful black magic and ritual sacrifice. Believers would put sticks in a cauldron believing that a spirit of a dead one would be tied to it and strengthen the believer. But they would also put animal parts that had been sacrificed into the cauldron giving them more power. But of course the ultimate thing to keep in your cauldron would be the ultimate prey, humans. Often conceived through grave robbing using different body parts, often the brain or heart to give them the power they wanted. But if you want to up your game, the ultimate ritual would be to use a human sacrifice, a live human sacrifice, or as the rest of us would call it, murder, to let the black magic prosper. Adolfo's godfather was a rich man, he had gained most of his money through dealing with drug dealers and would tell Adolfo that as the non-believers killed themselves with drugs, they would profit from their stupidity. Adolfo's crazy mother started to believe that her son had gotten psychic powers and said that he could foresee certain events. She specifically mentioned the shooting of Ronald Reagan in 1981 as one of them. Despite his ability to see into the future, however, he would be arrested for shoplifting twice that same year. He also started displaying signs of bisexuality, with a preference for fucking men. Adolfo was then in 1983 brought to Mexico City where he would become a model while spending his free time telling fortunes. It was around this time, before Adolfo returned to Miami, he would recruit his first disciples, the first member of his cult. He would claim two of his new recruits as his partners. One man and one woman, always there to suck and fuck whenever he wanted to. But this was only the beginning. In 1984, Adolfo Constanzo moved back to Mexico City full time, collecting more disciples as he went along. Rumors would spread about him and about his psychic powers and he would offer cleansings and rituals for people who believed they had been cursed. 
but of course he wouldn't do it for free. The more money you pay, the better the service. There was a clear menu of sorts of what you wanted to be sacrificed. With roosters going for $6, goats for $30, boas for $450, zebras for $1,100, and African lion cubs going for $3,100. Adolfo would also charm his way into the drug dealing business, making money off the drug trade and offer protection to drug traffickers. He would offer them rituals that would make them bulletproof and invisible to police which most people would see as horseshit, but many of the drug dealers had grown up as Mexican peasants and brujeria, another word for witchcraft, was something they had grown up to believe in. Adolfo earned a lot from helping powerful drug dealers with magic spells, even earning as much as $40,000 from one customer for a spell that would last three years. Adolfo's reputation preceded him at this point and his status would lure in more followers into his cult. But by 1985 he felt that he needed a little more juice. So he and his group of disciples went to a graveyard and collected a decent amount of decayed human remains and bones. His influence grew stronger and soon he would even have high ranking members of law enforcement on his side. Not with bribes but with his influence and charming psychopathic mind games. I hope you're still with me, because it's about to get darker. There is no definitive number of victims attributed to Adolfo and his cult, but at least 23 ritual murders is said to be documented, and there is a huge amount of unsolved mutilation murders around Mexico City that is believed to be a part of the Matamoros cult. The drug dealers working with Adolfo liked that he was such a ruthless motherfucker that he could torture, mutilate and murder total strangers just as well as close friends with such ease. Something that got him in deeper into the drug scene. But in 1987, the drug dealers would refuse an offer of a full partnership with Adolfo and this made Adolfo Constanzo very angry. He wanted revenge. On April 30th, leader of the Calzada crime family, Guillermo Calzada, and six members of his gang mysteriously disappeared. Police could only find traces of melted candles and signs of weird rituals having been held at the house from where they had vanished. About a week later, body parts started popping out of the Sampango River. Police started fishing for more and all in all they had collected all seven missing people. They had been through severe torture and had organs and body parts removed as sacrifices to the cauldrons of Adolfo's cult. The bodies fished out had ears, toes and fingers removed, while alive I might add. Hearts and dicks had also been removed from the bodies, as well as one body having the spine ripped out and two bodies having their brains removed. Later that year, Adolfo would meet Sara Aldrete. She would become his partner and second in charge. She went from living as an illegal alien in Brownsville, Texas, to becoming the godmother and head witch of Adolfo's Constanzo's cult. Adolfo moved his cult to a ranch and he would turn it into something out of a horror movie. Not only that, but his new second in command, Sarah, would make the torture more elaborate and she would add twists and turns to what could be done to the human body. A very creative young woman. His murderous escapades continued and in one case he would order his disciples to hunt down a transvestite by the name of Ramon Esquivel. They were to dismember Ramon and dump the morbid remains on a public street corner. Sort of like Jack the Ripper. Adolfo would also at one time help a man who had his wife and son kidnapped, so he staged another human sacrifice. And I couldn't find any details on this sacrifice, but we can probably assume that it wasn't too humane. In 1988, Adolfo even sacrificed one of his own disciples, as he found him snorting cocaine, and he had a strong rule against doing drugs. Adolfo could get carried away with his killings, ordering torture and mutilation upon rivals and even just on a whim if he felt like it. One time two dealers had accidentally walked in on one of his ceremonies 
and he decided right then and there that there would be two more bodies added to his pile. One time he had called for fresh meat, and one of his disciples went out and captured his own cousin, a 14-year-old boy named Jose Garcia, to be sacrificed. On March 13th, Adolfo had just sacrificed yet another person, but he was disappointed because the victim wouldn't plead for mercy or scream no matter how much he was tortured. Something that frustrated the sadistic side that was blooming in Adolfo Constanzo. And this is when he made his first and biggest mistake. He ordered his disciples to get a smart American student because at that time there were thousands of American students celebrating spring break just across the border in Mexico. His disciples were to get a smart American boy because they needed a brain from an intelligent person to offer the protection from law enforcement he felt they needed, but it would do the opposite. Because it was that night Mark Hilroy was abducted, walking back into America with his friends after a night of partying. His friend had stepped off the path for just a minute to take a piss. Mark had been waiting for his friend, but when his friend were done with the piss, Mark was just gone. Mark was a bright medical student, 21 years old. A perfect contender as the sacrificial lamb. Mark was out partying with his friends when they got split up in the massive crowd of people. He managed to reconnect with one of his friends and while his friend stepped behind a tree to take a piss, a van came up behind Mark and a man with a badge lured him to the vehicle. When Mark was near the vehicle, two men tried to grab him but he broke free and ran away. That's when another car cut him off and another man with a badge yelled at him to freeze. This time they managed to capture him and cuffed him in the back seat. Then they drove to the ranch. We all know what happens at the ranch. Mark was kept in the car until around dawn. He was blindfolded and one of the property's caretakers came to feed him and give him water. After this his mouth was taped and he was brought into a shack. In this shack he would be repeatedly sodomized and tortured over the course of hours. Eventually he tried to run away but he was caught. That's when Adolfo came up to Mark with a machete and with one determined swing chopped into Mark's neck, killing him instantly. They then proceeded to remove Mark's brain and sacrifice it in the cauldron. They also chopped his leg off at the knees and dragged wire through his spine, making for easy removal when they needed more material for rituals. And there he was buried, a piece of wire sticking up from the ground where his mutilated body were. The search for Mark Kilroy started out fairly normal. He was one among many students reported missing in Matamoros in that year and most of the other ones turned up hungover. But something wasn't right about this case and it blew up. 20,000 handouts were distributed with his photo and his case was highlighted on America's most wanted TV show. No one knew where the fuck Mark was but foul play was suspected. Was it a robbery gone wrong or would there be a ransom call? Luckily enough the investigation caught a break in early April 1989. That's when one of the men who had kidnapped Mark Kilroy was seen speeding past a police checkpoint. The police officers decided to stake him out rather than just arrest him on the spot and they followed him to the ranch. Police decided to have a look at the ranch and found various religious and cult related items as well as traces of marijuana. They also had gathered some info on other members of the cult living on the ranch so they made their move and arrested the man they had followed. His name was Seraphine. They also arrested a handful of other members. Everyone was interrogated and when the caretaker of the ranch was asked about Mark Kilroy, he admitted that they had seen him in the shack on the ranch. They then proceeded to interview Seraphine, and strangely enough, he admitted to everything and would also tell the police that a lot of people had been murdered on the ranch. 
He told police that Adolfo Constanzo and Aldrete was the leaders of the group and that Adolfo believed he would receive strength and immunity from law enforcement and enemies by sacrificing humans. And he also told police that Mark Kilroy had been chosen at random after Adolfo had ordered them to find a gringo. A piece of wire was marking his burial place and the wire was wrapped around his spine so that they could just pull it out and use the bones as necklaces and other things. The suspects were taken to the ranch and was forced at gunpoint to dig up graves. After Mark Kilroy's body had been discovered, the cops were baffled as to why his legs were chopped off. This wasn't for sacrificial purposes, but to simplify his burial. All in all, 15 bodies had been dug up. They all had signs of torture and they had all been killed in the last 9 months. Although Mark Kilroy was a random person chosen on the street, most of the victims were rival gang members and drug dealers that Adolfo had chosen to dispose of. But three of the found bodies were never even identified. A huge fucking amount of weed and coke was also found, but in contrast to all the bodies, I hardly think that matters much. Police would also find pieces of a human brain inside an iron pot, as well as a bunch of animal remains. I have read in a few places online that cannibalism was practiced, but I can't find any evidence of that being true. Police couldn't find Constanzo and Aldrete though. The other members had been hunted down. Mexican police were told to burn the pots and religious items on the properties of Adolfo Constanzo if they wanted to find him. And so they did. And oddly enough, shortly after that, Adolfo was located. Several armed officers were sent to the apartment where he was hiding and a gun battle ensued. During the firing, Adolfo ordered one of his men to shoot him so that he wouldn't get captured. And so, that's where the story of Adolfo Constanzo ended. But on photographs and autopsy reports, Adolfo had a lot of bullet holes. If you ask me, which I don't know if you're doing, I think his legend was so much larger than him and that the Mexican police officer was scared of him. Many of them also believed in brujeria. This is fact, not my speculation. However, I speculate that maybe they pumped him full of lead just to be sure. Aldrete was captured and the American authorities have said that if she is ever released, they plan on arresting her themselves. That's what happened in Matamoros in the late 80s, when murder, black magic and fanatics ruled the landscape. I hope you like the episode. I'll be dropping a teaser for the next one in a day or so. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>